What's going on everybody? Welcome to part three of playing games with OpenAI, Python, TensorFlow, and all that. Where we left off, we created our training data. And now what we want to do is actually create a neural network model and train a model based on that training data. To do this, we're going to be using TensorFlow. If you're not, or, uh, well, yeah, we're going to be using TensorFlow. We're also going to be using TFLearn. If you want to learn more, you can go to Python Permanent, type, go to the search TFLearn, and it'll be the first and only option. Um, anyway, you can learn about that. I thought I was going to be able to just copy and paste from this tutorial, but I forgot this tutorial was doing a convolutional neural network. And many times when you're working with OpenAI, you're going to actually be getting all the pixel data from the game. Not This one doesn't return the pixel data from the game. There might be a way to acquire it. I don't know. But what it returns for you in the, in the observation is actually just like the pole position, cart position, and so on. Anyway, um, so we're not going to be using a convolutional neural network. So I can't copy and paste from that. Bummer. Anyway, it won't take too long because there's a lot of copy and pasting anyway when you create a model. So let's get started. So we're going to come down here, and I'm going to create a new uh, function. We're going to call this define neural, uh, neural network model, and it's going to take an input size. Why does it take input size, you might ask? Well, I'll answer that. Basically, <clears throat> In this case, we can actually train and test this in like, I don't know, we can train it in like five seconds or something and then test it, you know, however long, however many tests we want to run. Um, but we could test it headlessly instantly too. So, um, but in many, many times when you're going to, you're going to create models, you might have to train them for like days and then you might acquire more data and you'll retrain them. So with TensorFlow, you can save your model. But to load a model that's been saved, you actually have to have a model already defined, and it needs to be the identical shape to the model you're loading. So generally, you're going to want to separate out the model and then the training of that model and the you know using of that model and all that. So let's define the model. First of all, you get your input layer. So it's going to be network. It starts out as just being the input data. <coughs> the shape of that data, it's not going to be a string going to be none by whatever the input size is. In this case, it's, it's four. It's, uh, it's coming from the uh, observation. But we're going to try to keep things as dynamic as possible, so later you could, add, you could try this on different games. So uh, there you go, and then we're going to say name equals input. Now what we're going to do is create our fully connected layers. So we're going to say network equals fully connected. It takes the input is network. It's going to be 128 nodes on that layer. And the activation function will be ReLU for rectified linear. <clears throat> then we're going to do um, the dropout. So we're going to say this, this might not be necessary on this one, but later on I think it'll be proved to be useful. Anyway, dropout network 0 0.8, which is kind of weird. Um, this is actually the keep rate. <laughs> so, so yes, we're going to do dropout on the network, but actually it's keep rate rather than the dropout rate, which is kind of odd if you ask me. Anyway, cool. Copy. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's actually 80% dropout. Um, two, three, four, five. We're going to do five layers. We probably could actually get away with all five layers being 128, but I'm going to make it a pretty tree, and I'm going to say 256, 512, 256, 128. Beautiful. Don't you see it? It's beautiful. So, um, also, if you're on, this should fit on, I don't know what the memory is of this network, to be honest. Uh, I think anybody could run it uh, on just about any GPU. If you're on your CPU with your typical RAM, definitely. Uh, but if you're getting an error, like failed to do something with 00M for, um, you know, memory, basically, um, you ran out of memory. So if you're hitting errors, uh, change these, make them different sized, smaller. Now, uh, once we've done that, now we need to finally finish. We're going to say uh, network equals, this will be the output layer, fully connected network. It takes two outputs. Again, like I said, we actually probably could get, a, with this example, one output, because in theory it's either on or off, and that could be left or right. It's just a binary. But let's go ahead and go with two. And later on, like I said, like you're, this, this is hard coded, so you're gonna have to change this. Whereas, <clears throat> if what we could do to make this truly like, you just change the environment here and you're good to go. And I guess you'd have to change the score requirement too. But you could make the score requirement like the top 
80% of scores or, or something like that. And that would probably work. But anyway, you know, you, you could change when we do the random, take that line and replace this line with that line. And then later get all the unique values for actions, whatever that number is. That's how big your one hot array should be. And then you could actually um, down here, make that this, that whatever number that is. Um, and then you really could change the environments. I'm not going to try to do that here, but I think that's all you'd have to change at this point. Anyway, the activation here is actually going to be softmax. Again, all this stuff you can you can tweak if you want. In this case, it should all work. This is just your typical neural network. Um, but as you get into more complex games, more dimensions and stuff like that, like right now we're just moving left to right. It's a 2D game. It's super simple. Uh, but as things get more complex, you, you're going to have to probably tweak things. Anyway, uh, network now, we're going to do regression against the network, the optimizer. <clears throat> we're going to use Atom. Again, you could do something else if you wanted, but Atom's fine. The learning rate will be whatever we set. 1e, negative 3 is what we did. Loss will be categorical cross entropy. Hopefully I didn't type of that. Um, and then finally, name equals, uh, where did it, there we go, targets. All right, hopefully no typos in that function. Now we're just going to say model equals tflearn.dnn, deep neural network, um, on the network. And then if you want, you can do tensorboard dir, um, and you can say log. Uh, if you're on Linux, it'll just go to slash temp. Uh, on Windows, this should, I think it'll create a new directory for us. Um, if you want to learn more about actually doing something with the logder on TensorBoard, you could check out the convolutional neural network with Kaggle, cats, and dogs. You should be able to pythonprogramming.net. Let me just search for it real quick, make sure it exists. Yes. So you can go to pythonprogramming.net, literally go to search Kaggle, um, and then do the classifying cats versus dogs. Maybe. There we go. Um, yeah, so on this part, we, we, we talk a little bit about TensorBoard and all that. Not a lot, but it shows how you can play with TensorBoard. Anyway, I'll move this aside now. Um, okay, and then whenever we're done, we return the model. So this hasn't been trained. It's just it's just the model. So now let's go ahead and train the model. So to find train model, it's going to take some tr training data and it's going to take, whoa, it's going to take some training data and then it's going to take a model in theory, it doesn't have to, but for now, we're gonna say, we're just gonna say the default is false. So if it doesn't have a model, it's gonna create the model. But if you do have a model already, i.e., you saved a model and stuff like that, you uh, you could just well, basically, if you saved a model, um, never mind. Let me just write the function. <laughs> Shut up. So x equals uh, numpy array. This is a little unfortunate. Uh, if someone has a, a cleaner way of writing this, uh, do let me know. But anyways, we're going to do i zero with um, for i in training data. So don't forget, training data contains um, observations and then comma, the actual output, the, the action that you took, 0, 1, 1, 0. So the x, the feature sets, that's all your observations. So boom, observations. But we have to unfortunately reshape them negative one len and then we're just going to actually do len training data zero zero for whatever that shape is keep it nice and dynamic oops Ooh, that would have been bad um and then one yep that went, ran off the screen a little bit hopefully that's okay again uh, sample code source code all that's posted so if for whatever reason um you didn't get that one in fact i can make this a little smaller i think that'll probably fit Nope. Maybe that. There we go. Beautiful. That's probably still acceptable. So um, that's your X. Now your Y data will just be basically the same thing. It's just going to be, let me just do this. Ooh, ooh wait, we didn't do numpy array. Um, we need to do list comprehension here. Whew. Fixing errors left and right. Now we're going to do the same thing though. So actually copy paste. Rather than the zeroth, it's the firsteth. If you need to learn more about list comprehension, there are tutorials on pythonprogramming.net. So, 
Uh, now, what we're going to say is if not model. <clears throat> so if we don't already have a model, we're going to say the model equals this neural network model, copy, paste. And rather than input size, we're going to say input size equals len of, well, since we've already got x defined, we'll just say the 0th x. So whatever the length is of that, that item. Okay, so now that we've got that, uh, cool. Now we're gonna do model.fit, and fit takes a whole bunch of fun things. So first of all, it's going to take your input, and the input will be our x's. It's going to take output, which is called targets. That's going to be your y. Then it's gonna take epics. We're gonna say number of epics. Uh, we're going to say, for now, five. We probably actually could have gone away with three, but five will be enough. If you do too many epics, you're going to overfit. It's just what's going to happen. So if your network is actually training pretty quickly, there's a few things you could do. You could lower the learning rate or something like that. But if it's a simple problem, like this is, if you train too much and you get too accurate, you've overfit the problem. So actually, as you'll see, when we go to fit this, we're not actually hoping for like 95% accuracy. If we get a 95% accuracy, we're going to be in trouble. <laughs> it's probably not going to work as well. So, or 95 or greater. Um, snapshot step. Uh, we'll just set this to 500. Show metric. We will set that to true. And then we'll give it a run ID just in case you are using um, open AI stuff. Uh, TensorBoard. Okay. Let me make sure that actually closes that off. Yes, it does. Um, and then we'll return the model when we train the model. <clears throat> so now to run this stuff, let's go ahead and do an initial population again, because I felt like that other one was a little unfair. Initial population model will equal train model because we don't actually have a model yet. Training data. Okay, let's run that. See how we do. Hopefully no errors. We'll see. We'll see. Dang it, just trying to scroll. Oh my goodness, am I gonna just, can I Can I do this, please? Thank you. Scroll that up. Uh, a little dirty, we could have run this in a command prompt and it'd be a little prettier, but that's okay. So actually, I don't even think our loss is improving that much. I'm not, five epics is probably too much for this problem. That's okay. Um, why did we just print that again? What did that happen for? Why did that get printed again? <laughs> that was weird. Why did it print that out again? Average accepted score. We didn't ask it to do that. We asked that initially of it. Right? Weird. Okay. I'm going to ignore that. I wonder, did it happen? Didn't it happen up here? Yeah, it happened up here. Wow, am I tripping? Oh, you know what? I bet we typed it twice. I bet it's down here. Yeah. <laughs> Harrison. Always messing with future Harrison. Oh, my goodness. They're controlled. Okay. So the model's trained. Um, you might be a little scared of that accuracy. So as you can see here, um, you know, we start off. Let's see what some, some of our initial loss was. Six, let's say 69277 or so. Let's scroll all the way down. We actually, we improved the loss a little bit. Not a whole lot, but we, you know, we did okay. <laughs> Quite a bit of our accuracy was in the 60s, but yeah, we ended on this in pretty, pretty disgusting 56.97, almost 57. No problem, though. We're going to continue along because I still have awesome things to show you. Um, never fear. So now that we've got a model trained, the next thing that we're going to do is actually use the model and play a game. So um, that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, did you get an error or something like that in the model of running it or whatever, uh, let me know below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video, and we'll actually see how this model does.